Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hello, you guys. So today is Saturday, September 3rd, and Saturday energy ties into Saturnian energy. And Saturn energy is a slow moving energy, as you know, and an energy that deals with karma. And karma, not because, like, you know, um, like the universe is just judging you and dishing out karma because of past lives. That's not how I see it. Basically, for me, karma is learned behavior. This is where we were conditioned to believe what wrong is, what right is, what is punishable and what is rewarded. So as we become adults, we learn to punish ourselves and reward ourselves based on what we were programmed to be wrong and right. And sometimes, you know, when I think of like, say, Saturn energy, I think of like restriction and how we restrict ourselves and even hold on to values that like don't really value us and the values that were installed in us that were programmed in us you know came out of maybe fear you know i want to say love because it just feels like the right thing to say but the truth is it comes out of fear and just unconsciously programming the next person the way how we were programmed and you know sometimes we have to realize like okay what is my programming and we realize our programming based on like our outcomes you know where it's like say if a person keeps having the same um outcome when it comes to making friends things keep ending the same or when it comes to romantic connections things keep ending the same deep down you know that person has a belief or a programming and then from that belief or programming that they hold near and dear to their heart and don't even realize it you know their emotions and their perspe perception of situations you know cause them to react in ways to like you know, justify the belief that one holds within and don't even realize it. You know, the moon is in Sagittarius and the moon is being squared by the sun and Mars in Gemini. So the moon is in Sag and with the moon in Sag, the moon is in a place where we want to have experience. We want to explore and we want to like know all the different things that are out there and this is where i want to see it for myself i want to understand it for myself and with mars opposing the moon mars is in gemini with mars in gemini this is where we're curious about our local community and just the people with around us this is where we're motivated by things that like you know could seem more superficial where the moon is in a place where it wants to go in depth like it wants to get more substance and the sun is in virgo and with the sun in virgo the sun is in a place where it's like you know we're more concerned at times with say you know perfection and how things should be where sag energy to me has a systematic vibe about it but at the same time could be a bit rebellious because of its need to like have experiences you know so to me that's a challenge on this day when it comes to the moon the inner world feels like it wants to get away it wants to explore and it doesn't want to keep having the same mundane type of experiences where mars and gemini is like you know it's like mars and gemini is curious about the same old thing in different ways you know and like i mentioned the sun and virgo the sun and virgo also too like you know analyzing 
about things that like you know basically to me it's like when i think of the sun and virgo what's coming to mind is like scientific energy when i say scientific energy it's like when i think of science and i would love to hear your thoughts on it in the comment box too like when i think of science i think of science as a system that helps us to better understand what is it's like when people say science made a discovery i don't feel like or science made an invention I feel like science might make discoveries by us understanding what's already around us and being able to bring it into practical terms to where our senses can more perceive it. It's like boxing it in. But it's like, I don't feel like when it comes to inventions, I feel like everything is already present and it's just a matter of tapping into the different things that are present and different processes and tapping into those things. So to me, I look at the sun and Virgo and I think about our ability to like, you know, research and analyze what is and understand it in a way to where we're able to see patterns and it's predictable. But with the moon and Sag, this is where it's like, I want to explore on a larger scale opposed to like, on a more intimate type of vibe and Saturn um so Saturday is Saturn day and um September 3rd and the third aspect of the day is what gives us that I feel like Sag rebellious energy where it's like I want variety because the number three energy is one that reflects the part of us that feels like we're in prison whenever we whenever something gets too predictable it's like yes some of us like um, predictability because it makes us feel safe but then to me the number three energy is a part of us that doesn't want to eat the same exact thing every single day for the rest of your life similar to Sag energy also wants variety but the day adds up and reduces to the number nine vibration and with the day adding up and reducing to the nine vibration you know this is where this is where we feel like, um, you know, we don't want to, it's like we have the desire for change and for new experiences, but don't want to rock the boat because it's like, I don't want other people mad at me, or I don't want people judging me, or I don't want people excluding me or rejecting me. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm just going to go with the flow of things, even though deep down inside, I really don't want to. And I also look at how the, you know, true node, the true node, north node, semi sextile Chiron. So, you know, when it comes to say destiny and, you know, destiny and where we're aspiring to, when it comes to say values and foundation, that's positively aspecting our wounds. And to me, the benefits of that aspecting the wounds is because, you know, like I've said in other videos, like if you really know, want to know what your purpose is, like pay attention to your wounds, the things that challenges you the most. Because in this life, it's like our wounds is our blessing, meaning that first we have this thing that's painful, it's hard. Like I think of Chiron energy. So say Chiron energy deals with a wound that will never, ever heal. And it's like at first, it's like this wound is the worst thing that can ever happen to a person because it will never, ever heal. But then a person comes to the realization of how to treat this wound and how to create peace for themselves in the process of treating this wound. And then also to turns around and holds the light for others who also struggle with this wound. What's coming to mind is like, <clears throat> say how they'll say like alcohol addiction is like a disease and like once an alcohol, once an addict, always an addict. I don't know if I believe that fully or not, but like say if that is the truth where once an addict always is an addict, say a person have figured out ways how to m monitor and, you know, control, not even control, a person has figured out ways how to embrace their emotions, accept their emotions, and get to the root of feelings of powerlessness, which I think is what you know creates addictions or whatever. We feel powerless, so we want to escape the moment. You know, so it's like constant escapism. So say a person gets a proper understanding of that, and then from them applying this process, they're able to guide the light for others. Where it's like if ever they um you know, fall off from this, they can relapse into this thing. So they've dedicated their lives to like, you know, basically keep their, basically um, they've dedicated their lives to free themselves from this thing. But in the process of them freeing themselves from this thing, they are, they have became experts because they have, you know, firsthand experience of 
being an addict from struggling with this thing. So it's like when other people cross their paths who's also struggled with it, they are able to be a light. They're able to like guide the other person because of their personal um, you know, struggle and what it is that they're, they've been through. It's like I mentioned in yesterday's message, how, you know, basically when it comes to say where we're pulling information from is our community and normally the community that we're meant to pour back into. So it's like when I think of the Chiron North Node energy, you know, this is, we're, we're still trying to figure out like, you know, what is, what kind of traditions do I want in my life? You know what you know what kind of systems do i want to start like implementing in my life to get me from a to b because you know our our our, our traditions or our values are like systems like roadmaps that are meant to get us to a destination and with that positive aspect happening to chiron to me it's us seeing how what we may have looked at as a hindrance or what we may have looked at as something that holds us back or something that other people judge us about is actually a strength like i remember when like me thinking too much would seem like it's a problem to certain people you know what i mean and now i realize that's a strength i remember at one point i used to try to like not seem so curious about things and used to and then other things about myself that i used to want to restrict you know or even say my voice or the way I talk. I remember when I lived in California, I went and saw like a speech coach and my friend who's a speech pathologist told me, you don't need speech coaching. And I'm like, yes, I'm monotone and people keep bothering me, teasing me about it. And she's like, you get excited about what you're excited about. But that's because she is a person who's a part of like, you know, our world that's into the metaphysics that's into this different thing. So when I would talk to her, I would get excited. So she would see that, but the other average person never saw my excitement because the way I engaged in with them never made me excited. And I guess I never had it within me to like put that pep in my voice if I didn't mean it, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, and, and then I'll get people here tell me all the time. And it's mostly people who either have like, strong water or earth placements or their mercury in those houses or placements will always say i like the way you talk or for the longest like i used to get teased about it like in school like they used to tease me about the way i talk they used to tease me about my voice and throughout the years i have but like I started embracing it and realizing it's actually a strength. So I'm sure that's the same thing for you. Whatever thing that you might think is a wound to you or something, it's like I was having a coaching session with this young lady and she was saying how like she needs to work on her speaking because something about the S when she speaks. And I'm like, girl, like that is like a sign. that's like your signature like whenever you speak it's like music to my ear to hear that s at the end it's almost like she writes it's like her speaking is writing and at the end of every letter there's like a swoosh to you know what i mean the way how she writes her letters when she writes certain letters it's like it's authentic it's unique to her if i was to hear her you know on a podcast or something, I would know her voice. It, it would be a signature opposed to, you know, her going and helping them to mold her to be a robot because that's what it'll sound like. Because, you know, when it comes to say like fashion or beauty, there's a standard. So if we're trying to get everybody to be that standard, we're getting everybody to be that robot. So like, yeah, when it comes to say you, you know, that thing about yourself that you consider to be a wound, I bet you, I promise you, it's a blessing. And it's a matter of embracing it and feeling comfortable, you know, ba basically embracing it and knowing that it's a blessing and it's uniquely you. And there's so many others around you who may have felt the same way about that thing and like embrace you and look up to you for being so confident about that thing about yourself. You know, where at one point, it, it felt like a hindrance. It felt like a problem, but it's really not like to me, it's just what makes us special. It's like what makes us shine. It's like our, what we call as a hindrance or what makes us broken to me is that spark that makes us shine amongst other stars. You guys, you know, it was such a pleasure. Um, oh, <laughs> I forgot. I didn't even pull a card. I just got lost, um, in the energy. This is like this week so far feels like a channeling it feels like i'm channeling energy 
and um yeah i just got so pulled into the energy so let's see what kind of card is coming up and i love this card coming up because basically to me it's like everything i just said about like having the wound and realizing that this wound does not like determine like who you are and it doesn't mean you're broken and with the devil card coming up in the reversal position to me is like freeing ourselves from like those holes those mental holes that have a hole over us and telling us that like we're not enough we're not good enough and we need to aspire to be this way because it's like when you look out into the world everybody's starting to look alike it's like with the whole tea thing everybody's starting to look alike you know just it's like like basically we're conditioned to all want to fit under a standard which makes us all cookie cutter you know what i'm saying and it's like okay look alike and i mentioned the tea thing the last story that i'm gonna share is like i remember a long time ago um i went to a dentist to consider like you know filling in my gap and she told me that i shouldn't and i'm so glad that she gave me permission to not do that and it's crazy because now that i look back and realize that how you know a lot of us forget that we're adults and we still feel like that small child that needs someone to say you can do this or you should go after that path or you should make that happen when she looked at me and told me that no i don't think you should it's like she gave me permission to embrace it and now i love it like every now and then i'll get someone who might say something about it but it doesn't affect me because i love it again it's those little things that make us seem broken and different is the spark that makes us shine you know in the dark amongst other stars you guys it was such a pleasure sharing this message with you as usual if you like to get your natal chart read or if you like to join the book club at, or be a part of the meetup group and check out the weekly exclusive content to Patreon only. The link for Patreon and getting your needle chart read is in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a brown heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.